everyone from Goshen, Indiana. While I'm walking the girls, I thought I would share a story with you. That in the unit is blocking the wind. Currently, Horizon has all of the northern Indiana yards shut down because of sustained, sustained winds of 25 miles an hour. I left the yard, but I had to drive down to a truck stop, which is like, I don't know, maybe a mile away, because that uh, front tire there was per near flat when I hooked to this unit. But my little jump pack aired it up enough that I can uh, get on down here, and then I used the air at the uh, facility here to go ahead and get it aired up the rest of the way. The story I want to tell you is kind of complicated. It's not complicated, it's just a little long. I'll try to be brief. You know how I am sometimes, I'll rattle on. But a couple of weeks ago, I was approached by somebody at Horizon, kind of a, a higher, upper level person. I'm not throwing out names in case they do not want to be identified. But they reached out to me via messenger and said, hey, would you be interested in getting apportioned plates? And I didn't respond because these days, the way people are, I'm like, I don't know, is this some stalker guy? Some stalker, I don't know, is this some stalker person? Is this a pickup line? I don't know. So I didn't respond to it. But I did reach out to my traffic manager and I said, hey, if I get an ELD, no, I'm sorry. I said, if I get a portion plates, do I have to run an ELD? Yes. Eh, no, I don't want to run an ELD. So I just let it go. And then dude reaches out to me again because I had responded. Yeah, I already checked into a portion plates and they answered any questions I had, and I just let it go. Well, they reach out to me again and said, well, I just had dinner with the owner of the company, and he's getting ready to put together a unique team. I call it the A team. He calls it the elite team of drivers who have apportioned plates to haul the heavier units that the manufacturers are going to be starting to put out. And he says, you're the first person I called. And I'm going, sure I am. Because I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. I'm like, I'm thinking, well, that's a lie I can live with. But maybe I am the first person he reached out to. He says, yeah, I've been, um, I've been, I've been, uh, watching you on Facebook because you know I on the Facebook uh, horizon drivers page I post all my loads and stuff he says um, I like your work ethic and he says I think you'd be great for this team and so I thought about it while I was driving through what Montana I guess and I thought yeah I don't know if I really want to do that but then I had questions I'm like okay if they're putting together this elite team and they need drivers to haul the heavy units, are we going to get more pay? And so I uh, sent the guy a message and I said, so are we going to get more pay? And he says, oh yes, we're definitely going to be doing something like that and uh, probably waive the, the pickup fees. I said, well, that's a good thing because why would I want to hook to a heavier unit and tow it when I can hook at the same pay, when I can hook to a lighter unit and have better fuel mileage? Good point. And he answered my question. And so right then I'm like, okay, fine, I'll call him. So I picked up the phone and I called him. So I got dude on the phone and we ended up talking for about an hour. But the first question I asked him, I said, so who are you 
And how is it you are on a first name basis and dinner dates with the owner of the company? He goes, I'm such and such. I'm the number one driver. And I went, oh, so you're that such and such person. By the, we talked, yeah, for, for about an hour. And by the end of the conversation, I'm like, yeah, I, I think I, I would be interested in doing that. He says, well, reach out to your traffic manager and let them know which I had already been in communication with the traffic manager with the uh, first questions that I had. And so when I got back to Indiana, I went over to corporate and I said, I'm interested in the abortion plates. I said, well, we need your title. I don't know what they do with the title of the truck, but they need the title. And I said, well, I don't know if I, I don't, I don't know if I carry it with me. Well, let me check. I don't. And I said, so if the bank can, can send me a, a copy of the title, that would be all right. I said, yeah. Well, the bank won't talk to me because the loan for the truck's not in my name. And so they, they, they can talk to me, but they can't send me any documentation. I said, fine. So I asked my traffic manager for a load going south. I said, hey, I need a load going south because I need to swing my, uh, my filing cabinet in Kentucky and get the title for the truck. That's how I ended up, do you mind sitting on me? I, that's how I ended up with that Decatur, Alabama load. So I, I nabbed the um, title to the truck. While I was there, I had to get my TARS, T-A-R-S, TARS rotated and was able to get a 34 hour reset while I was there also. And boogied up to Wakarusa this morning. Well, left for Wakarusa this morning. By two o'clock in the afternoon, I was up at headquarters and I was finishing the process for the apportioned plates. And so they gave me all my paperwork for the apportioned plates and my IFTA sticker, my uh, New York HUD thing. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. I know like this much of what's going on. And I hooked up my ELD, which at midnight will kick in and it'll start tracking my miles and my movements and all that good stuff. I have a lot to learn. I, I have a lot to learn. The first load they wanted to put me on with an, that's an ELD load because it's like super heavy and they, nobody can haul it. it. It's in North Carolina. I've been dispatched on it, but they're not open on Mondays and Tuesdays. And so my traffic manager got me a load, this load, this load, which is going to, I think, Pasco, Washington. Yes. Picked up Goshen, Indiana. It's going to Pasco, Washington. Shipping weight on it is 12849. GVWR is 16995. My traffic manager thought this would be a fine load for me to do. Something to keep me busy over the weekend. And when I get back from Washington, then I pick up that load going to North Carolina. And I think it's got a shipping weight of like 19,000. I, I, I remember looking at it when, when my traffic manager showed me on her computer screen. But you know me in numbers. I've already forgotten most of it. So I wanted my first load as an ELD apportioned plate driver to be an apportioned plate load but it turned out I'll have to wait one more load so right now I'm under this kind of light load going to uh, Washington and then when I get back we're gonna get into some big business what's nice oh what's nice about the uh, North Carolina load my traffic manager says well I will waive the pickup fee which has gone up to forty dollars now and I'll see if I can get you in for a five cents a mile raise on the uh, per mile and I said make it ten and you got yourself a deal she goes well I'll ask Jason because I guess Jason approves all that 
She sent me an email. You've been approved for 10 cents a mile more. Sweet. Hey, you don't know unless you ask, right? <laughs> so, got me another trip out to, to Washington. And I'm going to be using it to figure out my ELD. It's going to be a learning lesson. Learning how to log that way. And I'm going to figure it out. Because, yeah, I'm ready to up my game. Because what's really going to be nice about the ELD is I can haul more than campers. Um, I can haul a boat. Um, I might could haul a horse trailer if I had a gooseneck thingy, but right now I'm just fifth wheel, but you get the idea. I, um, it's gonna open up a little bit more thing, more things that I can do. All right, I, I've rattled on enough. I am going to check with control and find out if we are released to go, if the wind is good to go. If not, I might just settle in for the night, go to bed early and leave early. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff one way or the other. So that's the update I have for now, and we'll catch you guys on down the road. Morning from the Port, Indiana. I just spent the morning updating my new logbook system thingy. It's still the same system, but um, I had to manually enter everything yesterday because they told me that once the system, once the ELD system kicked in at midnight, it was going to erase everything that I had logged yesterday, and so I had to manually enter it in. So I got that all figured out. The uh, tutorial video that they sent me to learn how to Bluetooth my phone to the ELD device on the dash. That was good. That was very helpful. So I'm all set and I'm ready to go. Getting ready to head out. It rained all night last night. That was nice. I am I'm eager to get this day started. So I think we'll get this day started, right girls? <laughs> they had to go out go potty in the rain. They're, they're shivering like they're freezing to death. My drama queens. <laughs> It'll be warm soon enough. All right. All righty, guys. I'm going to head on down the road. We'll catch you guys later. Morning from somewhere in the middle of South Dakota. I just had to emergency pull over on the side of the road. On the side of the interstate. door for the propane compartment popped open even though I had it taped I don't know them latches are worthless I tell you what so anyway just thought I'd share that with you Missoula, Montana, Flying J truck stop. There was a dude that passed me in the hallway as I was heading back to the bathrooms. And he goes, you've got a good YouTube channel or something to that effect. And it kind of caught me off guard. But uh, to the gentleman who thanked me for my YouTube channel, thank you for watching. You know who you are. Yeah, I had to, long story, I had to buy headphones. Um, the boys back in Kentucky, well, one of them anyway, installed a new uh, stereo into my truck. And um, that has a backup camera. And today at noon, it just quit powering on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can't go through life sitting in this truck without some noise. So, uh... I'm going to attempt to get these headphones up and running 
at least get them charging. I don't know. But anyway, I have to have something. I can't just sit here and do dead silence. Somebody doesn't know how to drive their truck very well. Anyway, I can't, I, anywho, I can't have dead silence. I just, I, uh, I, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I am going to go ahead and put them on the charger because what's the chances they're even charged? So, but the pretty, they got red like Horizon Transport. <laughs> we just can't have nice things. Jump pack saved my bacon this morning. Ran out of juice. I think it's, I don't know, when I park for the night, I try to shut off my lights and my fan because I leave the auxiliary on so I can have my um, clock on my stereo, which by the way is working again. I think I messed up. Apparently I had manually shut the uh, stereo off and didn't realize it. And so I'm like, why won't this thing come on when the key comes on? Because that's, I think, like that. So anyway, I normally try to uh, shut off my lights and my fan, the in-cab fan. That way nothing's running. And um, something drained the battery to where I didn't have anything this morning. But jump pack saved the day. Yay. I recommend everybody have a jump pack. One that works. And know how to use it. The jump pack's getting a workout this morning. As you'll recall, when I picked up this unit, that tire was low, and I've been having to air it up every morning. And I've been fortunate to be able to stop at a um, truck stop that has air. This place that I'm at, I'm surprised they even have indoor plumbing. So, jump pack, gonna do its thing it's gonna air it up as much as it will and I'm 46 minutes from destination if I find a place to stop in the meantime oh uh, that I can air the tire up the rest of the way I will if not I'm just gonna be going slow enough that it should be all right should be don't quote me on that this is the jump pack that I have And after every usage, I charge it. So I'm gonna put it in the truck on the charger so it'll be ready for the next time I need it. Oh, by the way, I'm in Othello, Washington. Getting ready, I'm logging in, getting ready to go. Just need to pit stop by the um, trash can and then we're out of here. The jump pack aired it up as about as much as it's going to. So if I see something, like I said, on the way, I'll stop, if not, take it easy um I am 46 minutes from destination hopefully oops I hate it when I hit the back button and I go all the way out of the map program I am so good at that oh my word I don't know how I function sometimes <laughs> I don't know about me anyway anyhow let's go Let's get rolling. Okay, enough of that. Made it to Pasco, Washington to the customer without incident. That means the tire made it. They're, um, I've already unhooked from it. They're, they're uh, checking it in, doing their inspection. I haven't gotten my uh, paperwork yet, but I have submitted my post-trip pictures. We're on our way. I don't really see anything on the uh, reload board, so I might just be heading back to Indiana Bobtail because I'm already dispatched on that load going to North Carolina, but I'll check the load board again. I'll actually check it every day, make sure, see if there's something in the area.
But um, it's good to be here. The weather's nice here. It's going to be a great day here. They left the unit open, so I'm going to take you guys up inside and let you see it. pretty nice I do like that window that's across the nose there in the bedroom just kind of gives the room more light done I'm just creeping through the parking lot so that my ELD doesn't kick in I'm gonna go right outside the uh, parking area out on the street, submit my paperwork. I'm already putting in a request for another load that's going from Washington to Arizona. And I told my traffic manager, I get it, I'm already dispatched on the North Carolina load, but if you want, I'll take this one. But if she wants me to just boogie back. I mean, I imagine it's my choice and I don't really have to ask. But because I'm already dispatched on that other load that they've been trying to move for a while, I'm checking with her to say, like, hey, do you do you want me to just boogie back or do you want me to, or can I take this other load? So I'm going to park here in the sun, submit my paperwork, and then we'll see what happens with the rest of the day. Breakfast! We haven't had breakfast yet! Yeah, I was not about to eat at that truck stop I stopped at last night. I mean, the more I thought about it, I'm like, I wonder how sanitary everything is that they've been cooking. Because I'm telling you, I'm surprised they even have indoor plumbing. I'm just saying. But it was a place to park. I should be grateful for that. We should always be grateful for the things that we have, I reckon. Ooh, got a breeze, too. Alrighty. Paperwork. And then I'll let you know what's going on. Alrighty, the um, other load that I had in mind on the reload board didn't work out because I didn't notice that it's not ready yet. I, it will bug me probably until the day I die. Why do they put things on the reload board that aren't available yet? Anyhow, I'm heading back the exact way I came because my ultimate destination is... Goshen, Indiana to pick up that North Carolina load. However, the main reason I'm glad that we are heading back that way is I saw one of those not exact 
let me roll the window up in case it's breezy. Not exactly one of those touristy type places, but a touristy type place where they sell, because this is a, a high produce area and lots of signs for lots of different types of apples and there's a big store I passed on the way in thinking, I'm going to stop there if I go back out that way. Well, I'm going back out that way, so I'm going to stop. And I'll see if they got something going on. I'm going to move for cheese and crackers. I'm just saying. Do I have cheese and crackers? Cheese and crackers and apples. Apples and cheese. You get the idea. So, I'm heading that way now. So we're going to go in and we're going to see gifts and chocolate and all sorts of stuff. And we're going to see if we can spend a little bit of money. We're going to walk the girls first. Something smells delicious and Mexican-y. <laughs> Don't freak out. Chloe does that every time I back the truck up. And because the sun is shining, I will leave the truck running with the air conditioner on for the girls. But potty them first. Got myself some apple cherry cider, some licorice pretzel pretzels, chips and salsa, and a fajita wrap. And I didn't explore the whole store. And as I was walking out, I look over to my left and there was the apples. And I'm like, really? <laughs> And I'm like, once I make a purchase, I don't want to go back in and I don't want to freak out my credit card and all of that good stuff. And I'm like, besides, my back was killing me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. So I'm going to enjoy my fajita wrap and my chips and salsa. 
And then we're gonna head on down the road. You know what's really weird? I don't have to say I have to log in anymore because the uh, log, the ELD, ELD, it takes care of all that for you. And the minute my vehicle gets above five miles an hour, it just logs me in driving. I'm like, sweet. And it writes down my mileage and keeps track of my mileage. I'm like, hmm, this is nice. I like this. So let's have some chips and salsa, right? Yeah. What do you think, Chloe? Tell me what you think, Chloe. <laughs> She's hot. She hates hot weather. Uh, anyway. Okay. What do you think? What do you think, Stink? You big girl. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna eat and and then I'm gonna start driving. Hands down. Best salsa I have ever had. Excellent fajita wrap. The apple cherry cider, awesome. I'm gonna finish it off with dessert. Black licorice pretzel. I just now realized it's not really a pretzel with black licorice. It's really just black licorice shaped like a pretzel. That's how my brain that's how my brain works. For some reason I thought, oh, they've dipped a pretzel in black licorice. That's what I was thinking. That's what I get for thinking. Anyway, dessert. Now we're gonna head on down the road, right? And there was enough, um, the fajita wrap, there was enough there that <clears throat> I can still have a, a, second, a second meal. So that'll probably be, I don't know, what am I working on, lunch? Because I didn't have breakfast at lunch. It'll be a lunch. If I time it good enough, it'll just be dinner and I'll skip one meal. And chips and salsa. It's pretty good stuff. I would stop here again. And I'm eyeballing the Black Widow apple. I don't know what's going on with that Black Widow apple. But there's lots of chocolate and all that. You've seen it on the video. Like, yeah. I have to be careful with chocolate. I'm not addicted to chocolate. I'm not a chocoholic, but when I'm in a chocolate mood, I go all out. So maybe I am addicted to chocolate. I try not to keep it in the truck. Anyway, anyhow, I got nowhere to go and a all day to get there. Actually, I do. I need. I do need to get going back to Indy, Indiana, so that we can get on to North Carolina. Yes, I don't have a nice cushiony thing, armrest, I don't know. This is a work truck. It's not a, uh, what do you call it? A leisure truck? So, hey, that's my dessert. A little stinker. Chloe was sniffing my pretzel. I don't know if she would actually eat it or not. All right. I still can't get over the automatic log thing, so what I do is I always have my log book up and running, and I watch it. <clears throat> Any day now, some people should not have a license to drive. I'm just saying. So anyway, I watch my logbook, and then it, and then once the vehicle's been rolling over five miles an hour for a little bit, it'll switch over and show me driving. And I can't get over how cool there is driving. <laughs> Love it. So anyway, I knew it was going to be a good day today. I just, I just knowed it. It's quite the story in there, though. You saw the video, and I didn't even get all of it. <clears throat> I didn't even capture the half of it. But, um, really nice story. I, will, I would stop there again. Try a different type of salsa. Get that Black Widow apple. Um, mm, I don't know. What do you mean? Alrighty folks, I'm about to hit the main road. I don't need any distractions, so I'm gonna let you go and we'll see what happens for the rest of my day here. So it goes like this. Driving along, minding my own business. I get a phone call from Horizon and and one of the traffic managers that works in the ELD division, I guess, ELD. Any, anywho, she calls me and she says, hey, I see you just unloaded in Pasco, Washington. I was wondering if I can ask a favor of you. I said, oh yeah, what's that? She says, we've got a flatbed trailer 
at one of our yards in Idaho that we need brought back to Indiana. Would you do that? And I said, I don't mind doing it, but I've got um, a fifth wheel hitch that is, um, the, the, the head on it, the plate on it will, will tilt sideways uh, back and forth to, to give the, everything just a little bit more play instead of everything being so solid. And I said, I'm not sure it'll work because I've never used that hitch on a flatbed before. I said, I told her that I know that my husband had a setup like that. And when he was talking with the people at Dan's Hitch, they said, you're gonna hate it. They were right, he hated it. She says, well, let me get with the flatbed division people. And she says, cause I'm looking at, at a picture of your hitch right now. And she said, I'll call you back. She called me back. She said, well, according to the flatbed people, it'll go. And I said, okay, well then we'll do it. So they're gonna dispatch me like it's a regular load and I'm gonna go and pick up this flatbed and take it to Indiana. And she says, and if you're interested, I've got another one down in Tennessee and I've got a load I can take you down there. And I said, well, here's what I got going on. I said, I'm already dispatched on an ELD load going to North Carolina. So I might could, depending on where the Tennessee one is, I said, I might could pick that up and bring it back. Cause it pays a buck 70 a, a mile. To, to move those trailers. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. So um, as soon as the dispatch comes in and I see the address, I'm gonna head that way. I'm probably gonna have to like head south because right now I'm running the upper part of Washington and I would end up going through the panhandle of Idaho. But I'm guessing that the trailer's gonna be down at the southern part of the state, which means I'm gonna need to reroute myself and head south. No big deal. <laughs> Happy to utilize. Oh, that was the other reason she called me. She goes, yeah, we need somebody with a bed to leave. And I'm like, sorry. I mean, I, I'm like, <laughs> okay. All right. You'll know something when I know something. A lot has happened since the last time I talked to you. First of all, turn around heading right back the way I came when I got up onto interstate 90 there was a left truck stop and I said well let me stop I don't want to go too, too much further until I know what direction I'm going and then traffic manager calls me back and says okay you're all set to go on the flatbed but we've got a little bit of a twist and I want to run it past you and be honest with me and tell me what, how you feel. I said, okay. And she says, there's a driver who had a death in the family and had to fly back and would you be interested in loading up his truck and bringing it back with you? And I said, yeah, I, I can do that. I said, now do I, are there straps to tie it down? No, you'll have to buy those. I said, okay. I said, cause if you ask me to, to hook to a, a hook, hook up a trailer, I'm like, and run the winch and everything like that. I'm like, no, but I said, I, I, would, I could drive a vehicle up under the trailer and load it. She said, all right, let me, let me let them know that you're good to go on it. And then somebody will be reaching out to you. I said, in the meantime, I'm sitting here waiting to know which way to go. Could you at least tell me which direction to go so I can make some, some miles? She goes, yes, head to Twin Falls, Idaho. I said, okay. So before I left, the Oregon people called me because the uh, traffic manager said that you don't need to worry about loading the trailer or buying the straps. Somebody's going to meet you there and they're going to load it for you. I said, sweet, that's even better. And so she said, you'll be, you'll be contacted by uh, the Oregon people. I guess, I think she called it the Oregon people. I, I don't know. Sure enough, Oregon people called me. He goes, where are you at right now? Spokane. Which way are you going down to Twin Falls? And I told him the route. So you'll be going through Pendleton? Yes. Well, I'm gonna dispatch you on a load that delivers down in the Idaho area. That way you won't have so much deadhead. Even better. 
So I'm on my way to Pendleton, Oregon to pick up a load going to Idaho. I have no idea where in Idaho yet. And it'll deliver in, yeah, it'll do Idaho. And then that way I don't have as so much deadhead. And then uh, the people on that end are going to meet me. I don't know how it's all going to work out. I'm not sure where the trailer's at anymore. I don't even know where the flatbed is at this point. But once I get the flatbed, somebody's going to meet me where the pickup is, and they're going to load it up, and I'm going to take it back to Indiana. So far, that's the plan. So, going right back the way I'm... So, the question is, should I stop at that Apple place again? Because <laughs> I think I'm going to be driving right past there, and I didn't get my apples. I'll let you I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on this by the way is what I like about the job is the variety doing different things being able to do a variety of things so glad I got the bed to leave my uh, all of that good stuff my cedia all that I'm 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 happy so, yay oh and to be clear I'm not happy about the driver with the death of the family that is really sad. Um, man. Death is our last enemy. Without getting too preachy, I'm looking forward to the day when death will be no more. Revelation 21.4, you're welcome to look it up, but it's my favorite scripture. Death will be the former things passed away. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but you get the idea. Alrighty guys, I made it to Pendleton, Oregon. This will be the last update for this episode. While I was en route, I was contacted by the Oregon people, I guess. And he just wanted to give me an update to let me know that the load they he had planned for me isn't ready yet and um, he asked me if that would be all right and I said yeah that's fine I said I'll, I'll just get into Pendleton get a good night's sleep and uh, he says okay he says I'll, I'll, I'll get on it first thing in the morning about 8 o'clock Pacific time so that makes that what 11 Eastern time my time so I've got quite a bit of time off here in Pendleton, which I'm going to do a whole lot of nothing. I searched for a Sam's Club, there isn't one. And so, I just realized my window's down and the wind is blowing. This may be windy interference on this video. I like uploading the episodes to my YouTube channel from the Sam's Club because they go quick. Which, by the way, I'm up. I'm currently uploading the trip uh, to Washington, to um, Woodland, Washington. I'm just, I'm just now getting around to uploading that one. So you'll have already seen it by the time you see what I'm doing right here, right now. But um, that noise you hear, beside the wind, besides the wind, I'm right next to the interstate. And I'm at the top of the hill, kind of real close to where I was the last time I was here in Pendleton, where I had that awesome sunset and sunrise photo. And I wanted to, I knew I'd, I knew this location where I'm currently parked would be really good for a sunset photo, but it's so close to the interstate. And so I'm going to move over a block and to where it'll be a little bit more quieter. I'll, I'll be on that. What did I call it in that last video? Um transport alley and motel alley it just all sorts of stuff was happening here i suspect part of it is because there's an rv dealership down at the end of this dead end road could be yeah i was wrong it's not an rv dealership it's just a um storage storage facility and there's a lot of rvs there my bad turning around in this really bad cul-de-sac gravel 
National Monument Crater Area. Don't nobody take me serious about the National Monument Crater thing. That was just insulting the driveway. But I do think I found somewhere nice. It's at the end of a dead end street. Semis, I won't be blocking any semi parking that way. And, uh. But I'm just chilling here. It's kind of weird not having anything to do. But it's alright. It's all part of, excuse me, it's all part of the job. But we're alright with it. The girls, they're all zonked out. We've had our dinner. And, uh. I'm just gonna relax. We are relaxing. So I want to just say thank you everybody for watching and just remember guys it's all about the perspective.